Welcome to Pat's Cast, the unofficial Regina Pat's podcast. I'm Matt. I'm Chris. And this is our episode for October 26, 2021. Sedora at the middle point, he gave it up, and Connor Bedard has a breakaway! The Wonder Kid, he scores! Pats back in, Dubinsky driving wide, cutting right in, and he scores! What an unbelievable effort by Cole Now this is the episode for October 26, 2021. It's not last week's, in the risk of sounding like a broken record. We did have two games and two losses again this week. Um, we won't get too much into the nitty-gritties of the games. Uh, I think it'll kind of come out in our conversation, our first topic here. Um, just observing the the scuttlebutt on Twitter and, and, uh, and Facebook, fans are... Unhappy, to say the least, would you say, Chris? That's definitely a, a common theme on the, the internet. The fanatics are out. Yes. I think we can summarize it. Um, people feel some changes need to be made. Um, they're mostly looking at leadership um, behind the bench. Uh, I think over our conversation here, we're going to talk about a few things that maybe don't, maybe... Uh, necessarily support that idea i think i mean we all see in sports that's that's usually the the target if the team's underperforming the the coaching is is kind of that first person the cannon fodder that gets that gets looked at and and uh usually relieved of their positions first um so as they as they say it's easier to fire a coach than the whole team right right (laughs) but um and coaching does make a huge difference. We know um, we can we can look at the history here. So um, J- Dave Struish was the the assistant coach in our successful years. You know the 16, 17, 17, 18 seasons. Um, it's it's the vibe though that he was kind of a primary coach when even though John Paddock was in the the official position of of coach uh Dave was it was uh, coaching the team essentially is kind of the, the yeah, I think, feeling you get yeah definitely and I think John maybe was more focused on the GM duties mm-hmm. a little more than coaching not that he wasn't around but obviously but he was he was around but yeah and I mean you look at those seasons, very successful, and even even before that, you know, leading up to those good years that you know the team was progressing and and made some nice steps. And I think maybe that's where people are a little uh, a little frustrated. We we don't see the progress right. the last few years, right? Yeah, I think I think that's what we're feeling as fans too. Is the season was built up with some expectations and some hype and we haven't seen that materialize yet um is it is it our fault or the organization's fault maybe not the organization but certainly the media (laughs) part of the organization for hanging too much on one player coming in uh to write and totally change this franchise might be um but let's look at it from okay let's let's go from these these people that are upset their their vantage point so yeah we haven't really made progress at all uh, over the last few years it feels like um i don't know if we've ever really been over 500 it, i don't know if we do we just kind of hover around there and um don't get significantly past it uh t- the team continues to be undisciplined uh we've seen this over the last few weeks especially um you can look at the stats for that. Uh, I mean, the Friday game was okay, I guess. <laughs> it didn't have... It was actually yeah, only, fairly Yeah, only a couple penalties, I believe. Yeah, which was awesome. But it was on both teams, so maybe it was just called a little. And Saskatoon, I don't think, had any, or they had one uh, had penalty. Had Friday night. Right, so maybe the game was called a little bit looser, but then you came into the Sunday. The stats had 20-some minutes, but... It wasn't quite an accurate representation of, of the penalties. It was still significant, though. Uh, amount of penalties. Um, 
the scoring's not there. The creativity doesn't seem to be there. Again, undisciplined, lack leadership. I don't know. Yeah. So is it easy just to say, yeah, get rid of the coach? My feeling is, well, then who is next in line for one, right? So do you move an assistant up who's been working in that regime as well? Probably won't be a huge difference, right? Um, yeah, or the new guy. I mean, there's the new guy they brought in this season, but... That's true. Who knows? I don't know. He... I... <sighs> but, I mean, you've got some statistics now from the other side, right? Of why this team it just isn't a bunch of superstars. Yeah, like, you look at the team, I mean, you know, with trading away all those picks for those, you know, for those two years, you look at... Uh, the media notes from Friday night's game, the career goal totals for these players that are on the roster now are pretty, pretty low. Like you have one, one guy that stands out in the pack and that's Nyhoff with 38 career goals, but he's been around, this is his fifth year, right? Yeah. So he's 38 goals in his, these are career goals we're talking about folks, not yeah. in a season, 38 career. That's our top player. And then, no. And then the next players are at 19 goals career. Like you look at Smith, a 20 year old has 19 career goals. Yeah. You know Stringer, the Valley Hood pickup this year has a career of nine, or a career total of 19 as well. Yeah. You know, and then it just goes down from there. A lot of single digits with all the young guys, obviously, and and then so just a few guys. Like you look at Dubinsky, he's kind of on the only one trending upwards right now. He's on a nice hot streak. Yeah. And eight, eight that's kind of something think, we expected. Because you, you, we've seen that coming uh, over his career. You know, maybe it was a little, it was a little underperformed last year a bit, but uh, we see it this year. He's he's come to play this year, that's for sure. Yeah. And, and then you think about it, you know, you look at the guys down the, down the list, who else really screams top end talent on this team? Right. I mean, I don't want to take any way from anything away from these guys. Like they are who they are, but it's, you know, none, none of these guys are top end guys, you know, except Stringer was a first round pick. Well, you know, Feist is a first round pick, but he's a defenseman and a mm-hmm. young defenseman in this league isn't going to put up points. You look at Evans, it took him a while to get his game yep. going. Yeah. And then, yeah, you know, it's, and yeah, maybe too much was, you know, made of Bedard being here. And, you know, it's you can't hang it, your hat on one guy. It's a team game. You know, you look at, I'll make a comparison to the Kansas City Chiefs for you NFL fans. Like, Patrick Mahomes is unquestionably the best quarterback right would, now. Come on. Maybe. I mean, okay, so going in to this season, anyway. he's obviously struggled. But you look at... You know, yeah. you look at that, like, he he alone cannot make a team win, you know? Right. Right? Like, he was, you know. And then you look at, say, Seattle there, they lose a quarterback, and they're just struggling hard, <laughs> right? Yeah. So, it's it's a team game, and not one player can make a team, especially in hockey. Uh, so, I yeah. mean, I don't know what the fans expect from this team. Like, I they're a a fringe they're a wild card team at best like yeah. they're not a top three team in this division and i think the fans have to realize that yeah like, you look at winnipeg you look at winnipeg why they're so good well they've got four top two picks in their lineup yeah like top two drafted. one or two overall yeah 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 i four. think and and they just graduated uh first overall in krebs right so Last year they had five in the lineup, right? And that's the thing that is that's the difference between us and them is they they were in the dumpsters too, uh, mostly just because they had a bad team and they got those picks and they've built they uh, built a team they've built a team um, kind of like we did in the past and exactly then, yeah that's what when Paddock came in and he traded all those guys away when they were when the Pats were having a good season and what was it? 14, 15. And then that built it up for 16, 17 Mm -hmm. and had that incredible team. Yeah. So they know how to do it. It's just, 
the championship run and the Memorial Cup run really hurt. Yeah. And we're seeing the effects of that and and there's not much you can do about it because what are you going to I mean there is stuff you can do about it but what are you going to do sell more picks just to give it another go and a half here? Yeah. I don't you know you, know, you like we can't be a buyer this at this point in this year, right? Like it's not I don't think so. You got to you, you got to wait till next team. year and yeah. see if you can make some moves in the off season and find I I don't know what to say because you try to bring in some guys that have some upside, but they did that in, in guys and they haven't panned out, you know. Yeah. Brooke hasn't looked great you know stringer hasn't looked great lately Mm -hmm. so those are the guys that they were kind of counting on to step up that have you know some some skill and uh some older guys and and they haven't right exactly and i'm I'm wondering if you're starting to see some frustration like these guys must have had some they're not immune to it either right the expectations that we're around the team, and I think unfairly so, but, um, you know, you saw Bedard out there, and he's laying hits, like, and that's that's some of the highlights of the games now that we're seeing put out by the team. It's like, who had the nicest hit? And it's like, I don't care. I, I don't care if there's nice hits. I want to see some wins, too, and some... Yeah. Uh, man, but... I know, it's it's tough, and, and I... You know, I actually made the Friday game, finally made a home game here. And, you know, went talked to Dubinsky after the game, and you could tell the frustration was there. Like, yeah. he was he was dejected, I think is kind of the term I want to use. And and I don't know if we want to play that clip now of him. And uh, I think we should, yeah. So we'll roll that clip Chris was able to get of uh, Cole Dubinsky. Yeah, obviously, it's we got to learn. Our, it's going to be a long year, right? And, we had a couple of years of a lot of losses, and I, I know a lot of us guys who have been here through it all. We're, we're tired of it, and yeah, we got to learn from it quick. Like right now, it's, it's just we got to come and bring that more. Like it, it just comes down to it. We can talk and talk and talk. Eventually, we just got to do it. And that's all it comes down to. It's just each individual guy has got to bring it every night for the team to have success. We all got to buy into the same plan. And we got to go and we just got to outwork teams. And once we outwork them, grind them down, then we can just let our skill take over. But we just got to minimize our mistakes and we just got to be better. That's all it comes down to. We just got to be better. He's been on the team since 15. He's been through... Um really kind of the lows. I was going to say the highs and lows, but mostly the lows. Like, Yeah, he kind of came in after the highs, right? Yeah, yeah. so he's been riding the lows for a while here, and I think I think you hear in his voice the, the uh, just getting tired of it, right? And where he can go with that, is it who are they going to call on and what can be done in, in say, the on-ice leadership? Yeah, like those older guys got to really, really drive drive it. Uh, like Stroosh in in after that game as well, he mentioned you know he was happy with some of the guys and some of the guys he was not happy with. So like who who's got to you know kick those guys in the behind to get going here? Is it you know is it an on ice thing or is it an off ice thing as well? Right. Mm-hmm. So are some guys checking out already or are some guys not buying in? I guess that's one kind of the, of the questions. One of the things I feel like is like I'm looking over at my uh the seventeen eighteen team poster I have here and we have Nyhoff there. So it kind of the sad thing is not many of these guys know that culture of success right now, right? In in this in the mm-hmm. WHL. Um, they've had probably success in their, their other years, but, um, they don't know how to necessarily win at this level. <laughs> and yeah, no, that's for sure. They don't even know what to draw from and what it takes to win. Cause they've never been winners. It's sad to the say. The only but... other thing I, the only other guy I can think of is Brooke. He was with PA on that championship run i mean he was a young guy and didn't play a ton but he was sure. around that team at least yeah so yeah him and him and nyhoff right and 
mm-hmm. and the rest of the guys are all younger or they came from other other teams other levels even yeah so i guess uh what we want to say is you can just maybe put the pitchforks away um the team itself isn't a championship caliber team at this point they're not even necessarily a playoff run team at this at this juncture yeah. when you look at yeah. the when you just look at the bare bones stats and facts um not to say this team can't come together and and figure out a game that works for them but they're yeah, not going like to you, th- you look at it with all these guys you know struggling you know stringer smith Englot, bedard they have two points in the last like five games each right and mm-hmm. and dave alluded to that as well in a and i think it was maybe a yesterday's uh media availability he's like everybody's kind of snake bitten all at once here and it's it's been tough so you know what maybe some of these guys get going here i mean it's still early it's only nine games in it's a long mm-hmm. season um the highs and lows of junior hockey can be extreme but uh and that we are in that extreme low at the moment. It's just hopefully they can pull out of it sooner rather than later. Yeah. I I think this weekend, if you're going to do it, it's this weekend against a, a not so great swift current team, not a, not a rollover at all. Like these aren't easy games. Um, I mean, a team that has themselves gone through a coaching change um, should be, we should if we if we're gonna do it, it's this weekend. I think, I think, two wins here, on a home and home. Like this is it. This it needs to happen now, or can happen at least. This is a good opportunity. Yeah. Then they got a little kind of home home stand coming up with that Swift Current weekend, and then you got a Moose Jaw, Brandon, Red Deer, Edmonton, and Lethbridge all coming in mm-hmm. to the Brand Center. So. You know, sometimes maybe one of those Alberta road trips, which is happening right after that, um, can, you know, maybe get the team gelling a little bit, you know, get out on the road, you know, away from the local media. Yeah. Not that it's not that it, huge pressure here. There's not too many guys bearing down their throat like it's the Yankees or something. Right. But, you know, just get out on the road, you know, loosen up and, and go out and... And uh, you know, get to know some of these players a little better. Maybe kind of like how it was in the hub hub last year. So. Right. Yeah, that's a good point. Um. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, I'm I'm optimistic. I'm always I'm a bit of a homer. Obviously, I'm optimistic for this weekend. I think. I I'm hoping the team can uh, find that leadership, find the discipline, and play decent hockey and i think they do we always kind of say well it's you know we make fun of Struish, or at least i do for you just saying play the system but i think this team has to play the systems that are designed for them because they're not gonna they're not gonna be like winnipeg and out skill and you can't rely on them to score three goals in four minutes or whatever winnipeg did to moose jaw right it's just not gonna happen they're gonna have to grind out wins and play yeah, disciplined they, they good hockey. do have some skill but like uh but they do ha- definitely have to bring their lunch pails like they have been the last couple of years mm-hmm. grind out some wins. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. <laughs> in some encouraging news, uh, we got some attendance numbers in. Uh, Regina's still sitting, we're actually at third in the WHL for average attendance. Now it's only over four games, but an average attendance of 3,795. So, uh, I mean, far less than capacity, but, uh, I mean, it's a unique year with COVID restrictions and whatnot. So, um, it'd be nice to keep those numbers up. And I think, uh, the team needs to start winning to keep those numbers up a little bit. Um, people are buying tickets to see Bedard too. Like I've talked to lots of people. They said, Oh, we've bought a ticket. We want to see him before he's gone and, uh, get a chance to see him. And, uh, it sounds frugal or kind of frickle too, but they need, he needs to start going to start. He needs to light the lamp, get some more butts in the seats too, and uh, get that excitement going as well. Um, just for yeah, the casual maybe the goal, fan. maybe the goal on Sunday will help. Uh, you know, get that, get him off that little slide there. Mm-hmm. You know, get him rolling. Yeah, 
Yeah. And like I said, no better opportunity than Swift Current, not to take anything away from them, of course, but um, it's an opportunity, I think. And I hope we capture that. Hope we capture it. Yeah, definitely. Um, okay. Well, anything else about the Pats? <laughs> I don't think so. No. I think that's. I think we covered most of it. This, yeah. This for this week. I think that's the juicy topic of the week. Uh, what about around yeah. the league? I don't know. You can't, uh, not much. Winnipeg's still rolling. Like you said, yeah. they had a nice little comeback win in Mustra. Mustra gave them a scare. But uh, they're rolling. They just won tonight in Red Deer, three one. Yeah, I was just watching that score. So yeah, they they're on their uh, Alberta road trip. They do play Winnipeg on Friday at the same time that uh, we're you playing mean Edmonton. But, uh, sorry, uh, Edmonton, Winnipeg, and Edmonton. Yeah, which is uh, a fairly good matchup. I think that'll be an exciting one. Uh, Calgary on Wednesday, so tomorrow they got some. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. I got some tough games here in a, a short time span, so interesting to see how they come out of that. Yeah, they got a three and four on the road here, so well, that's a, actually four and five because they play tonight, tomorrow, and then Thursday off, Friday, Saturday, Edmonton, Lethbridge. Mm-hmm. So that's a that's a pretty busy road trip. Yeah, it's gonna be tough. Uh, otherwise, uh, Everett's rolling. They're six and zero. Oh. Kamloops six and one. Portland, uh, oh, that's right, that's the wild card. And then Edmonton, 6-2. and two. And Winnipeg's 10-0. and oh. Oof, Good for them. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting so, to see that team. I mean, they've gone through a lot. Uh, they were brutal for a while when they were in Kootenai. Yeah, for, for quite a stretch there. But yeah. yeah. That's, the, that's the nature of junior hockey. You can be down for a while, and if you make the right choices, make the right picks, don't... Uh, uh-huh. Don't do anything too crazy. You can you can build your team up. It takes a couple of years, but it happens. Yeah, I mean, and then moving the franchise and everything that went mm-hmm. with that. And I wonder how long they can sustain this success. Now that's that's always the question. How long can they go with it? Well, when are they supposed to get a their stadium or their rink? Oof, I don't know. I heard that it hadn't even been started at some point. I was going to look into that when I heard that. Because man, when like, you get a successful can't team be like this. And they got this <laughs> dinky rink they have right now. I don't know. That's going to be too bad if they really yeah. start rolling. Because, I mean, that's one of the best things. Like, we experienced that in 1617 when you get the team and you get the sold out barns. And man, that's a ton of fun. They need more capacity than whatever that is 1800, 2000. Move over to the MTS. Yeah, no for doubt. Playoffs. I think I think Brandon used to play a bunch of home games back in the day in Winnipeg as well when they didn't have a team. Yeah. Like they don't even mention on their on their website it says the ISO play home games at Wayne Filming Arena for nineteen twenty 1920 and twenty twenty one while it's twenty one twenty two at the yeah. moment. <laughs> so so speaking of attendance over six games they're averaging sixteen hundred and twenty one. Sixteen. That's gotta be Near the bottom. It's the second to last. Yeah, Swift Current is thirteen fifty one. Oh yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it can hold more. Like we, I was watching the last game there against the Pats, and there's room for more. You could well, squeeze in. They're just bleachers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> benches. Exactly. I mean, I don't know what the restrictions are if they're only if they're capped at a certain percentage or not. But I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, they definitely weren't at hundred hundred percent capacity there. No, no, but. Uh, they could be if they start picking up here and uh, yeah. the word gets out that they've got a good team. They could be start drawing some fans. Okay, well, let's wrap it up for the day. Um, put the pitchforks away, folks. I think <laughs> the team the team just isn't isn't that team um, yet. Yet, uh, when you still really start looking at it, nuts and bolts. Um, but Hey, let's hope for a good weekend here. Like I said, it's a good opportunity against Swift current. Let's get things rolling. And then we got a good homestand and then to the, into the exhibition, uh, road swing there. So, 
Yeah, basically. I don't know if is it aggravation even happening this year. I'm not even sure. <sighs> I don't know. They obviously planned around it. I don't know if aggravation is going or not. Yeah, that would be the aggravation road trip. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's uh, let's hope for a better tone next week, and uh, we will see you at the rink. Good night. All right. Have a good night. Pat's Cast is a proud member of the Saskatchewan Podcast Network. If you're interested in other homegrown podcasts with a wide variety of topics, check out saskpodcastnetwork.com. <laughs>